and by purchasing it, it tightens it up. Teeth are facing aft. Wow, that's what I was saying a couple of minutes ago. Um, Davison, but it's going to probably be within a pound or two. Hey guys, this is Lee here. I've been doing my sailing channel for about a year now, and I've gotten a lot of good feedback. I've been making a lot of videos about sailing, especially sunfish sailing. What I really love to see are all the comments down in the comment section down below. I put a lot of effort into these videos, but sometimes a viewer still has a question that needs to be answered. For instance, what's a trucker's hitch used for? Or how do I weigh my sunfish? Where do I put the cunning hand cleat and the alcohol cleat on my boom? Or how many times is Lee gonna ask us to smash that like button? Well, in this video, I'm gonna ask several of these questions from you, the viewers. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please think about subscribing. It's really easy. Just press that button down there and subscribe to the channel. It's totally free and it helps out the channel out a lot. And now to the first question. Anma asks, what is the trucker's hitch used for? If you've seen one of my videos about raising a sail or using a gens rig, anytime you raise the sail, it goes usually to the top of the mast, or if you're using a gens rig, it goes to the gens position. I'll leave the description down below on the videos that I mentioned in this video so you could check out the description below and you could refer back to that video and a trucker's hitch helps keep the sail in the position that you wanted to originally when you go ahead and start sailing around generally speaking if the halyards start to stretch or your knots or your cleat knots get loose the sail starts to the whole rig starts to lower down towards the deck wow that's what i was saying a couple of minutes ago he did not tie the cleat knot correctly and that becomes a little bit harder to sail especially if you're in some sort of racing position where the boom is already low to do the trucker's hitch you put the trucker's hitch in the halyard the tail of the halyard goes to the bullseye fair lead then goes back to the trucker's hitch then back down to the fair lead and then it tightens up the halyard and once it's tight and the tension is on the halyard then you can go ahead and cleat it off and that's what the trucker's hitch is used for. RT asks, what year sunfish should I get? Well, if you're brand new at sunfish sailing, you should try to get the best possible sunfish you can get. And it doesn't really matter what year you can get. The most important thing is you want a dry and light sunfish and not too waterlogged if you can get it. Now, budget is also going to play a huge role into this. So if your budget is only less than $1,000, you're going to be limited to what inventory is available in your area. And there's plenty of sunfish out there in the two, three, four, five hundred dollars $500 range, but who knows what you're gonna get. Sometimes you can get a really good bargain and you can get almost a brand new sunfish or something that has a rolled deck and not an aluminum trim and you still can get a good, good value, or you can get an older sunfish from the 70s and have a great value because sometimes those boats were made really strong and they were overbuilt. Now, sometimes you can get, if your budget is higher, then you can get a newer model, generally speaking, but then you might be looking at over a thousand and a brand new sunfish right now is going for about $4,600 to $5,000 depending if you get a recreational rig or a race rig. Sunfish Direct sold the world's boats and they all sold all 100 of them. And the dinghy shop just got a brand new shipment of sunfish. So go check out the sunfishdirect.com or the dinghy shop and they can hook you up with a brand new sunfish if that's what you're in the market for. The newer the boat, generally the better off you're going to be. But what I also suggest is, if you get something relatively new, hopefully you'll get extras. For instance, you'll get a SciTech dolly or a dynamic dolly. You might get a, a, a newer sail and you might get covers and more accessories. So you get more bang for your buck if you get something that's already been bought by your previous owner. However, because of the, the pandemic, a lot of things I had to deal with outside, including sunfish sailboats and all types of sailboats, have been in high, high demand. So it's a lot of competition out there, but keep your eye out because some people start to clean out their garages in the winter and in the early spring. 
You go check out Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. And those are really popular and sometimes eBay to find used sunfish. But if you can, by all means, get yourself a brand new sunfish and you'll be happy with it for a long, long time. Many viewers also ask, how do they weigh their sunfish? Well, there's a couple of ways to do this. And I showed you this way where we had a couple of people hold the sunfish on its edge on a simple bathroom scale. Now the advantages to this is most people have a bathroom scale and the disadvantage of it, it's a little cumbersome. You need a couple of people to hold it on its edge. Uh, the founder and owner of Aero South Technologies, Kent Mysgates, has also suggested to me that you could also take a luggage scale and then hold one end up like on the bow handle and lift it up, leaving the aft part of the boat leaning on the floor. Then you, you record how much the bow weighs and then you go to the aft part the stern of the boat, and then you carefully hook it up to the transom. He's mentioned the gudgeon bracket angle, but be really careful because if it's not secure on there, I could picture it slipping if you don't have it really secure. So what you do with that, then you lift up that end with the bow resting on the floor, and then you add the two numbers together, and that is the weight of the sunfish. I personally never have done it. Kent's an engineer, so it's probably correct. So Mike asks, what do I do in the winter to get ready for sailing in the warmer months? Well, for me personally, I actually sail in the winter. I'm in from New York and it gets kind of cold. So we do some sailing and racing called frostbite sailing. It's basically what it is. It's what it sounds like. It's sailing in the winter months and it gets kind of cold and it can get a little blustery because the winds generally come out of the north. And, but what it is, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of sailors that come out on all different levels, but the biggest thing is safety. You have to dress appropriately. Sometimes you use a dry suit, which does not get your body wet when you fall in and you always wear your PFD. I like to do a lot of reading and I read things on the internet. I watch a lot of YouTube videos and I read a lot of books. You can actually go to a place called a library and they have books on sailing and you could borrow those books for free. I know that's kind of a weird concept in this day and age with the internet, but when I first started sailing, I, was, I started sailing when I was older and I got hooked and uh, after I took lessons and I started reading everything I could. And, and I didn't want to spend 30 or $40 on a book. So I went to the library and I got all sorts of different books on how to sail and how to cruise and how to race and things like that. And I learned a lot just by reading. And when you go out to sail, then you could take that knowledge and try to apply it. And then you could ask questions to people who you sail with. Another thing that you could do with your boat, store your boat for the winter unless of course you're gonna be using it in the winter. And if you're gonna be sailing or racing like they do in the Southern or warmer states, you don't have to do, you don't have to store it like you store it in the North, but make sure it's clean. I made a video on how to store your sunfish for the winter. So you could check out that video in the description below. And I would inspect everything and make sure your spars are clean, all the metal that touches each other, like the gooseneck, which is a dissimilar metal to the spars. It's, it's moved to a different position, so it doesn't, it doesn't create a galvanic shock and corrode your, your boom in that position. If you inspect all your parts, and if anything is going to break, I would order it now so you have it for the winter and you can replace it in the winter. For instance, you, what's notorious about breaking would be the universal joints on your tiller extensions. Uh, check out your hiking strap if you have them. Check out the boom blocks on your boom. Just make sure they're they're stable, your traveler and, and your sail clips and sail ties. And look at your sail. If there's any rips in them, try to repair them. You could use sail repair tape, or if it's a real big rip, then go to a sail maker, you could repair it. If you want to get a brand new sail, this is a good time to get one. And there's many dealers out there that'll sell them to you. And you can get a recreational sail, you can get a recreational racing sail, or you can get a class legal racing sale. It's really up to you, whatever you wanna to do to have the most fun.
also in the cooler months when you're not sailing as much, or if you're watching my channel and you haven't started sailing yet, start looking for a place to sail that when the weather gets warmer. And now is a good time to look because then you can figure out where you're gonna keep your boat, if, if and when you get your boat, how much it's gonna cost so you can prepare. So when April and May roll around, you're ready to get out there, set your boat up, start meeting people, maybe figuring out where to take lessons, especially if you're new to sailing. And there's all different sorts of levels of lessons. Then you could join a club if you need to join a club. You learn all that stuff now before it's too late. Try not to look for lessons in July because a lot of times lessons and sailing programs will start registering in the spring. The Atkins Debt Diet asks, where do I put the Cunningham cleat and the outhaul cleat on my boom? So for people who don't know what those are, they're cleats that go on your boom so you could put lines to adjust the foot of the sail and also to adjust the front luff of the sail, which which changes the draft of the sail. The cleats generally are three inches big cam cleat, metal aluminum. Do not get the plastic ones because they don't really hold. And the Cunningham cleat is about 41 and a half inches to 44 and a half inches from the front metal part of the boom. And that is placed on the bottom of the boom. You could screw it in or you could rivet it in. And in centimeters, that's 105 centimeters to 112 centimeters. And the outhaul cleat is generally placed on the starboard side of the boom. And that is placed in between 64 and 67 inches from the front metal part of the cleat. And that's at 162 centimeters to 170 centimeters. So thanks for that question. What I've done with the channels, I started to interpret and do closed captions with Spanish and a little bit of Italian. It's taken me a little bit of time to do it. I'm going to translate the closed captions for the channel so more people who don't speak English could follow along with my videos. And I appreciate all the Spanish and Italian speakers who have been watching the channel. And now hopefully you'll be able to follow along with my terrible English. So I appreciate all the viewers from outside the United States and I appreciate you. Don't forget that smash that like button or tap it or hit it. I don't know how you say it in Spanish or Italian, just push it down there. FM asks, my 1982 Sunfish weighs 136 pounds. Do I need to open her up and dry her out? That 10 extra pounds is hard on me when I'm dragging her on the dolly. I don't have an access port, so I'll have to cut one. Is it worth it? Well, FM, thanks for the question. And if you really are having trouble pulling the boat on the dolly on the beach, uh, the first thing I would say is it's definitely worth it because sailing is one thing. I think most people hurt their backs and hurt their bodies by trying to pull their boat or pull the trailer or lift up their trailer. And if you get hurt, it's not worth getting hurt because you could lose a week, two weeks, you could lose months of sailing. So whatever it takes to get the boat around easier, then I'm all for it. Now, one thing is, are you using a side tech dolly or a dynamic dolly? Those dollies are so balanced and so perfectly made that the boat actually becomes very light and it should be easy to drag 136 pound sunfish uh, over land. Now, if you're from like Lewis, Delaware and the beach is like quicksand, all bets are off. So if you're from Lewis, Delaware, it doesn't matter if you have a hundred pound boat. It's just, that's a tough beach to drag it. If the boat has water in there and it's 136 pounds and you could hear the water, I would say, yes, it's worth it to put a six inch port uh, in front of your daggerboard slot and behind the combing and dry it out. Uh, one port should be able to do it. If you want to put two ports, that's up to you. But if you could dry it out in the winter, I think you could lose five, 10 pounds pretty easily and it'll dry out the foam. If you don't hear water, but it's still kind of heavy, the boat might be, it's a 1982, the boat might be overbuilt, which makes it kind of stronger. 
but there might be water in soaked into the foam. So if you could dry it out and save a few pounds, I think it would help. So I really do think a lighter boat is better and it's safer for everyone to drag around and it keeps you healthier. So by all means, keep your health as best you can and dry out that boat. And Bert asks, uh, thanks for the tribute to Davidson Nagel. So Bert sent me a couple of stickers for Davison Day. If you haven't seen my video on my tribute to Davison Nagel, I'm gonna leave a description down below on all the videos that I referenced here in this video. And Davidson created a Facebook page and it had a couple of thousand followers on there. And he showed himself uh, sailing and he was a really dynamic person. And uh, he died suddenly back in November. It's a really sad moment for people who knew him and people who knew him from Facebook. Bert uh, sent me some of these stickers, which, which are really cool. And they had a, a Davidson day to honor him. So thanks a lot, Bert. I, I really appreciate it. So if you wanted to see that video that I did, um, you could see it right there, or there's a link down in the description. And if you wanted to see part of how I weighed a sunfish, I did it on the world's uh, video. So I'm gonna leave it a link right up there. You could hit that button right there. And it's towards the end of the video. So if you wanna see how I weighed the sunfish, uh, just hit that right there. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you on the water.